Hi guys, it is April from Getting Hooker With It. Today I have a very special video that I have been planning and planning for quite a little while now. It's a list of books that I really want to prioritize in 2020. And it's brought to you by some of my very favorite booktubers. Let's get into it. Watching, as many people have, I am sure, the very favorite books that booktubers have been reading in 2019 and suggesting to you. And there were so many books that I wanted to read and so many books that I already had on my shelves that I thought I should compile a list of books from their lists and put it on a separate shelf and prioritize those books in 2020. Now, one of my resolutions for 2020 was not to compile a list of books that I had to read. So these are not have to, but books that I would like to read genuinely. And I have quite a few here. I think I have 29 books. Um, now I have to mention a couple of things. There are some booktubers, a couple of booktubers that I absolutely love. Um, where they went through their list and I had already read the books or I didn't have them on my shelf. So Rachel from The Shades of Orange and also uh, Kayla from Books and Lala, I just, it, there was no crossover really. Um, and then there are a couple of booktubers that I'm still waiting for their 2019 favorites. So Amy Poole and also Katie over at Chapter Stacks, I'm still waiting for theirs. If they have any books, that were the favorites of theirs from 2019 that I have on my shelves, I'm gonna be adding it to this list. But I wanna dive into the books. I have already started out on a couple of these and have been loving them. So I feel like 2020 is just going to be the best year. Number one is a Jen Campbell suggestion and it's Blue Monday by Nikki French. I feel like Jen Campbell has gotten pretty much all of booktube on this book series. This is a mystery series, which makes me very excited. Um, this is about Frida Klein. She's a psychotherapist and an insomniac. She follows this case in which a five-year-old boy goes missing. And as she's learning about the details of the case, she finds out that one of her patients describes the same or someone very similar and she's wondering if there's a link here on whether one of her patients has something to do with this abduction. Apparently this is an amazing series. I actually ended up buying this one from Chapters because I knew that Jen loved it so much and I'm hoping to love it and get the whole series. So yeah, that is Blue Monday. Thank you to Jen. Now the next one, I need to thank Emma from Drinking By My Shelf and also Simon's mom. I know that Simon of Savage Reads, his mom is not a booktuber, but she's on Simon's channel so often that I had to include her in this because I just, I really love Simon. I love his mom. So that is this, my sister, the serial killer. Now I've already read this and absolutely loved it like five star read this is just as the title suggests about a woman whose sister is a serial killer and she has helped to cover up the crimes um because her sister has always said you know it wasn't me they they basically forced me to do it, it was totally self-defense um but she has this feeling that her sister is truly lying and for she really is just a, ser a serial killer um one day her sister um, catches the eye of a man that she has been working with. He's a doctor and she has actually had a big, huge crush on him for a very long time. And she's terrified that her sister is going to kill him too. It is so well written. I absolutely adored this. I can't wait to read more by this author. I think this was a debut, but yeah. So my sister, the serial killer went on the list and I've already read it for 2020. Next up is a favorite of Katie's from Life Between Words. She's back doing more booktube videos, which makes me so happy. And she absolutely loved Gone with the Wind. This is a chunker and a classic. My God, how big is this book? It's nearly a thousand pages, which makes me so nervous. 
but I definitely have been wanting to read this. Um, this is a Civil War story and apparently has some of the most unlikable characters of all time. Scarlett O'Hara um, is apparently very much a hated person. And Katie mentioned in her 2019 favorites video when she was talking about this that like she knows that this has major flaws, that this is incredibly racist, um, but she still loved it. And so I am really hoping to read this as well for 2020. Next up is An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. This was a favorite of Lauren from Lauren and the Books and also Jen Campbell. I think Jen Campbell and Olive from a book Olive are featured here the most out of all of the booktubers. In any case, this is meant to be kind of a retelling of If Beale Street Could Talk. Um, this is about a married black couple. Um, the man in this couple is helping this woman out with something. I can't remember what she's, he's helping her move boxes or something along those lines. Um, later on in the evening, she is raped and she says that it was him. Everyone knows it was not him. The two people in this marriage know that it was not him, but he goes to jail for it. And it's about the crumbling of their marriage and, and the, the test that this puts on their marriage. And it's meant to be absolutely amazing. So uh, I definitely want to read this in 2020 as well. Next is The Sparrow by Mary Doria Russell. And um, this was a favorite of Olive from a book Olive. And this is a sci-fi story um, where we follow a group of people who are traveling in space and they are traveling for a religious cause I believe and there's like first contact with aliens in here. I don't know much more about it than that but I've heard actually really good things about this book um, for a while now. I think I first heard about it on the podcast What Should I Read Next? And then all of read it and loved it and so naturally it's appeared on this list. So yeah, that's The Sparrow. Next up is The Immortalists by Chloe Benjamin. And this one was loved by, oh yeah, Impression Blends. Um, Impression Blends is a, a, a YouTube channel that talks about books and also movies. And I really enjoy her reviews. So um, this is a, a book about a group of siblings who discover how they're going to die and you watch them go throughout their lives and watch them all die and I think you go person by person and um, watch their lives. I don't know. She said that the structure of this was really interesting to her and I think this is very much a love it or hate it book so we'll see where I land on this but yeah that's the immortalists and it's a really beautiful cover next up is the only one from vicky from chapter 32 but i am desperate to read this book it's confessions by kene manato this one sounds so tense it is about um a teacher and her students now the teacher's young daughter died on the playground um, where her students were all watching and she suspects or believes that one of the students in her class killed her child and on the last day of her teaching she confronts them and I just I can't imagine how tense this would be it would be so tense apparently it's absolutely amazing so that's the confessions thank you to Vicky for that Next up is a YA that I've already read and really enjoyed. Guys, who am I? I don't know. Okay, so it's Scythe. And this was absolutely loved uh, by Sarah from uh, Sarah's Nightstand. So this is a sci-fi utopian world in which people never die. Science has come so far that people don't die. And... Instead, we have this group of people uh, called scythes who randomly, they're supposed to randomly kill people off. And um, you can't stop it. If it's you, you are not allowed to stop it because your family will suffer if you do try to, and ultimately you'll die anyway. 
Um, and it is about two uh, kids, a boy and a girl, who are in training to become scythes. I, I loved it. Next up is a book that Emily from Books with Emily loved. It's A Little Life. This is an, another chunky one. I think probably the only other really, really chunky book on this. This is about 800 pages and apparently this will just tear you apart. Emily is not someone that I would say is super emotional. Like she doesn't really seem to cry with her books. She reads a lot of sci-fi and fantasy and she read this and apparently she she was really emotional reading it. This is about uh, a young man and his relationships with his three college classmates. I think he has gone through a lot of trauma as a child and it follows him and it's, I, I think it follows his depression. So it's meant to be really, really heartbreaking and heart aching and I don't know when I'm gonna be able to do this, but it might be this year. Next is a book that Russell from Ink and Paper Blog loved and it's If You Wanna Make God Laugh by Bianca Merez. Now this book I have been really wanting to read because she wrote Hum If You Don't Know The Words and that was one of my favorites in 2018. And this book follows three women, one of which um, is a young mother um, and she gives birth to a child. Um, and I think it's that child that is found by two other people, uh, two other women. Um, and it's about how these stories interweave and how these women come into each other's lives. And it's supposed to be absolutely amazing. And Bianca Moraes can like really sucker punch you in the gut with the characters that she builds and how much you care for them and just the heartbreaking stories that they that she weaves basically and I am so excited that he loved it because I've been wanting to read it for a long time so that's if you want to make God laugh. Uh, next is a book that two booktubers really liked. Um, Krista from Books and Jams and also Call Me After Coffee both really loved We Were the Lucky Ones. Uh, this is a World War II fiction book about a family, a Jewish family in World War II who try to escape um, the Nazis. In 1939, three generations um, basically have to split up and they survive by breaking off and it's based on the author's actual family, which I, I think adds a whole other layer to this. Um, so I'm very eager. I'm, I was really surprised it landed on two people's 2019 favorites because I haven't heard so many people talk about this one. So yeah, that's We Were the Lucky Ones. Next up is a book that I'm reading right now and I can't even tell you how much I'm loving it. It's Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. This was loved by Emma from Drinking by My Shelf, um, Sophia from Sophia Reads, and then also Impression Blends. And oh my gosh, this is a courtroom mystery. I thought initially it was a thriller. It's much more of a mystery and it's a literary mystery. And uh, we follow a group of people who are all linked together um, from this strange medical contraption called the Miracle Submarine, which basically gives a heavy dose of oxygen to their patients. So it's meant to cure things from autism to infertility. So we follow these patients um, and there is an explosion that happens and kills two people, injures several people that were in the Miracle Submarine when this explosion happened. And you're trying to discover who actually set off the fire and the explosion. And it's so much more than that. It's so layered. I'm not, this is not a wrap up, but all that to say, I'm reading it now and this might be one of my like new all time favorite books. What? Ah! So yeah, Miracle Creek went on it. Thank you to all of those booktubers for the recommendation. Next is another book from Simon's mom. Um, and it's In Cold Blood. This is, is this the only nonfiction? No, I think there's another nonfiction to come. 
Um, but this is a true crime story written by Truman Capote. I, is this the beginning of true crime? I'm not sure if he kind of invented the actual subgenre or not. But this follows the Clutter family um, who were terribly, horrifically murdered in 1959 in a small town. They were shot in the face um, at very close. And he goes to the town and interviews all of these people and tries to uncover who killed the Clutter family and why. And it's meant to have, be written very much like fiction, which is the best kind of nonfiction is when it's written like fiction. So yeah, that's In Cold Blood. Um, next up is a favorite of the Laurens. Lauren Wade and also Lauren from Lauren and the Books absolutely loved Queenie. And this is actually a book that I ended up buying after watching both of their wrap-ups, um, both of their top books, I should say, of 2019. Because I don't think I would have picked this up if it weren't for them. Um, this is about uh, a young woman um, named Queenie, I think. And she lives in London, I think. She is a journalist and she ends up dating these terrible men. And um, apparently it's kind of similar to Bridget Jones' Diary in some ways, but I think a lot more depth. And I have been desperate to read this ever since watching them both review it and just how much they loved it. Um, yeah, so Queenie made it to the list and I ended up buying it because of both of them. So thank you to them, to the Laurens. Next up is a Jen Campbell favorite. And this is The Perfect Nanny. This is called Lullaby in England. So just a heads up, um, this is by Leila Slimani and this is about, it's, a, it's meant to be a literary thriller. Um, and I think a lot of people struggle with this because it ends up being more literary than thriller, if I'm not mistaken. But this is about a couple who hire a nanny and you discover from the very get-go that the children are dead, um, that she's killed the children and you kind of work backwards to why and how this happened. It's meant to be amazing and I am here for that. So The Perfect Nanny is on the list. Thank you, Jen. Jen is amazing. Jen's always good. You can always count on it. Next up is um, a book that Leanne from Literary Diversions loved and it's The Lost Man by Jane Harper. This is about a man who dies in the desert. Now he has, I guess his car broke down and he's got tons of stuff in the car. He's got water and food and like shelter obviously from the car. But he leaves the car and goes walking and dies in the desert and you follow um, his two brothers who are burying him. And I think they're somehow linked to it. This takes place in Australia and it's meant to be amazing. And you know, Leanne loved it and I love Leanne. So here it is, The Lost man. Next up is another Jen and I, is this the last Jen? It must be because there have been so many Jen Campbell recommendations. Um, and it's another book that I ended up buying after watching her talk about it. She can sell a book to anyone. Um, that's Remarkable Creatures by Tracy Chevalier. This is not the last Trace, Tracy Chevalier you'll see on this list. Remarkable Creatures is about a true story of a woman named Mary Anning. She um, discovers all of these fossils on the beach and she restores them and she ends up selling them to wealthy men who can afford it. And they claim to have discovered new species. This is um, a historical fiction book. Uh, it takes place in the 19th century. So they all claim that they discovered these remarkable creatures but really it was Mary the whole time and I just I want to know her story I want to know how this happened in real life I mean it's obvious how that could happen but um I I just need to know so remarkable creatures was a book that I I had to buy uh next is another Tracy Chevalier and this is uh, a book recommended by Sa Simon from Savage Reads 
Uh, it's Girl with a Pearl Earring. And this was turned into a movie a long time ago now with Scarlett Johansson in it. And it's based on a Vermeer painting. And Vermeer is my dad's favorite artist. And I really like to read this. This is about the woman who poses for Vermeer and the, I think, love story between Vermeer and this woman. And it's meant to be amazing. And Simon said it's meant to be um, also a little bit hot and steamy. So I don't read a lot of stuff with that in it. But if I'm going to, I'm going to read A Girl with a Pearl Earring. Oh, I'm so happy just going through this list because I know so many of my favorites have loved them. So, and I've had such good luck so far. Okay, next up is Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. She wrote um, The 13th Tale, which I really enjoyed. Now, this was a favorite of both Katie from Life Between Words and also Olive from A Book Olive. And this has, uh, it's supposed to have a bit of magical realism in it. Um, and it's, I think it's meant to also be historical fiction. So we follow a little small town in which uh, a man comes rushing into a pub with a, a little girl in his arms and the little girl is dead. And slowly over time she comes back to life and a bunch of people from the town lay claim to her in some way and try to say that she's theirs in some way. and. I, I just, it sounds very, very magical. And I've had this on my shelves for a while now, so I'd really love to read Once Upon a River. Um, next up is another book from um, Olive, Olive's Suggestion. It's a classic and it's the only Jane Austen that I haven't read. It's the last Jane Austen, guys. Mansfield Park. I'm nervous to read this because it's the last Jane Austen, but I, I can just read them all over again, right? That's allowed and I'm sure I will enjoy them all over again. So this follows Fanny Price. She grows up with her cousins at Mansfield Park. When Mary Crawford and her brother Henry arrive in the neighborhood, they end up bringing with them like London glamour and parties and all of this stuff and I think some bad influence. And her cousins get really, really into it and love it. But Fanny is more hesitant and a bit more nervous about the whole thing. And I just, I love Jane Austen. So I'm finally going to read, hopefully, Mansfield Park. Next up is a book that I think it was Call Me After Coffee absolutely loved. And it's A Gentleman in Moscow. This is also a favorite of my mom's. My mom has been hunkering down and reading. She's read now both A. Martel's books and loved them, like has gushed about them. Um, so A Gentleman in Moscow is about um, a Russian man. Is he a count? He essentially, in 1922, is sentenced to house arrest. So he stays at this hotel in Russia um, and it looks down on the, uh, the Kremlin and it's about his experience at the hotel with the people who live at the hotel and stay at the hotel. And it is also about the Russian Revolution, which sounds absolutely fantastic. So, A Gentleman in Moscow, fingers crossed it goes down in 2020. Next is, I think, the last Olive from a book Olive recommendation. And it's The Body Lies by Joe Baker. This is, I think, another literary thriller um, in which we follow a woman who has escaped her life. She's had a very violent past and she wants to get away. So she goes to a smaller town to teach and she teaches creative writing. One of her students starts handing in some chapters that really seem reflective of her own violent past that she's trying to get away from. And it becomes really claustrophobic apparently and it just sounds great. So that's The Body Lies. This is the other nonfiction that I have here and this was a suggestion from Emma from Drinking By My Shelf. This is Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. Uh, this is about the sex lives of three women. And 
uh, apparently a lot of people have picked this up. Like I think Harriet from Harriet Rosie um, is reading this or has been lately. And um, she picked it up and thought it was fiction and then realized it's not fiction and like had to do like a double take because it's, it reads like fiction, which I'm so excited about. Um, so these three women have very interesting different sex lives. Like one of the women, I think her husband likes to watch her have sex with other men or other people. Um, one of the women um, was, I think, sexually assaulted by a high school teacher. And he's now like winning an award for teaching and she like steps in and like tells her story. Um, and yeah, so it sounds really interesting. Very different from anything that I've ever read. So that's three women. Um, next is a book that Russell from Ink and Paper blog really loved and it's The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. This is going to kick my butt and make me so angry and so emotional. I just know already. This follows a young man named um, Elwood Curtis. I think he's a teenager and he goes to a correctional school um, where I, I think it's four black boys. And I think this takes place in the 60s. And uh, it's called the Nicole Academy. And they are really, they're horribly abused, physically, sexually, emotionally. And um, there's also been a discovery of a graveyard close by to the Nicole Academy where black boys have been found dead. I don't know whether they've been murdered or whether they died um, from illness or what, but this is based on a true story. This place actually existed. Colson Whitehead wrote um, The Underground Railroad, which I still haven't read, but this is supposed to be absolutely amazing. So thank you to Russell. I know that I'm gonna get so mad reading that though. Oh my gosh. Oh, another book that's gonna make me mad because it's also based on a true story is Before We Were Yours. Now this is suggested uh, by Sophia from Sophia Reads. And this is about children that go to the Tennessee uh, Children's Home Society Orphanage. Essentially what happened is this horrible excuse of a woman named, um, what was her name? Oh gosh, I don't know what, it was Georgia Tan? Yeah. This woman named Georgia Tan actually kidnapped children. She kidnapped them from the hospital um, after they were born. She kidnapped children from their backyards. She kidnapped these children and then sold them through adoption. I just don't understand why anyone would do such a thing, but this actually happened. So this is the story of two little girls, I think, that are kidnapped gonna break my heart and make me so angry for these children but apparently it's amazing so that's before we were yours uh, I think there's like four more to go through here um, next is another book that call me after coffee loved I forget her name I feel badly but um, call me after coffee the YouTube channel loved a man called Ove and I still have not read any Frederick Bachman and I don't know why everyone loves him he is very very well loved this is about a grumpy man named Ove. And essentially what happens is uh, new neighbors move in next door and they bring him out of his shell. And we, I think, discover why he's been so grumpy his whole life and watch him blossom. And I'm hoping that I'll get some Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine vibes from this book. Um, hopefully it'll do the same kind of thing and just fill my heart and make me very happy. So that's A Man Called Ove. Um, two more. Uh, the next one is recommended by Harriet Rosie. This was a reread for her, uh, but she loved it all again, all over again when she read The Signature of All Things by Elizabeth Gilbert. I started this a while ago and for some reason stopped. And I remember I was liking it, but I just stopped. So I'm going to start it all over. Um, this is about Alma Whitaker. Um, she's born in 1800 to a botanical explorer. And she also explores plants, but as a woman, which was more difficult to do um, and not in really encouraged. 
and it's about her story. Sounds absolutely lovely. Um, two more. Um, next is Mary from Happily Ever Esh. It's one of her favorites from 2019, and it's. Anna Green Gables. I mean, if Katie from Life Between Words is watching this, she will be thrilled that this is on this list because I think it's one of her favorite books of all time. Anna Green Gables, Canadian classic. I am Canadian and still haven't read this book. And my parents actually went to PEI and they picked this book up and this is exactly what the first edition looked like. So naturally, I need to read this. It's a, like a children's literature book about little Anne who's an orphan and she goes to Green Gables in PEI where um, a group of siblings, a sister and a brother, take her in and Anne just grabs the hearts of everyone who meets her. She's feisty and fiery and a redhead and I, I grew up watching the mini series, so I know that I'll love this. I just need to actually sit down and read it. So there's that and one more, and this one is a beloved book of Krista from Books and Jams. So she loved The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. This is about a family that moves to Alaska. The father um, is an army vet and he has had a lot of difficulties since being back. I think he has PTSD and um, he becomes very violent and um, they live in Alaska kind of remotely and I, I think they have to like battle the elements and also battle the situation and the family dynamics that they're in. And I, I think we follow uh, a young woman. Yeah, 13 year old Lenny. It sounds great. So those are all of the books that I really would like to prioritize in 2020. I've already started to do it and it's paying off guys in a big way. Like I think 2020 might be the best reading year yet. Now I will say that if Katie from Chapter Stacks and Amy Poole come out with 2019 favorites, I will be adding more to this list for sure. But this is what it is so far and I'm very excited. I've been wanting to do this video for so long. Let me know in the comments below, have you read any of these books and what did you think of them? Fingers crossed you liked them. Um, but I'd love to know what you think. And are you guys compiling a list like this of your own? Um, if this goes well, I could see myself doing this every year, but I don't wanna like commit to that. In any case, I hope you guys are doing well and I will talk with you soon. Bye.